The movie opens up with a group of people traveling to Manali on a vacation. During their journey, the passengers talk about a random stranger named Arun. To their surprise, they discover that all of them are somehow related to him. While they are wondering how it can be possible, the bus falls off a cliff. One of the passengers on the bus is the protagonist, Vikram. In the following scene, the doctor treats Vikram and tells him that all of the other passengers on the bus died, and he is the only one who survived. He calls Vikram a miracle, and also mentions that though his whole body was unconscious after the fall, his left hand was continuously active. With this, Vikram explains that his left hand has behaved weirdly since his birth. The scene then shifts to a flashback, where Vikram's parents are informed about the vanishing twin syndrome by their family doctor, Dr. Rajan. He explains that Vikram's mother was pregnant with twins, but the fetuses merged sometime during pregnancy. Vikram still has some neurons from the second child connected to his left hand. The doctor further mentions that the left hand can behave independently and can feel all the emotions that a normal person feels. Eventually, he warns the parents to take proper care of their child. After a few weeks, Vikram is born and his parents seem to love him very much. Since his mother knows about another soul residing in Vikram's left hand, she treats the hand as her second son and shows it all the affections she bestows on Vikram. I've heard of hands being people's girlfriends, but nothing like this. Back to the present, Vikram returns home and meets with his sister, Sridevi, her husband, and their daughter, Mahalaksmi. Vikram believes that Mahalaksmi is the rebirth of his late mother, so he tries to fulfill all her wishes, and the two share a great connection. After recovering from the accident, Vikram gets back to work as a professional advertisement director. He owns an advertisement company named Artic, where he works alongside his friends, Kitu and Tenali. The next day, Tenali and Vikram go to a location to meet their new client, who turns out to be Chitra, Vikram's college sweetheart. Flashback to their college days, Chitra collides with Vikram on her first day, and he is instantly smitten with her beauty. Later that day, he goes to talk to Chitra again, and his left hand hits her on her back. Offended by the act, Chitra makes a complaint against Vikram, and he is called to the principal's office. While talking to the principal, Vikram apologizes for his mistake. He pulls Chitra out, affirming that he will apologize to her in private. Outside, Vikram tries to tell her that it was his left hand that hit her earlier, but Chitra thinks he is making things up and walks away in anger. In the following scene, Vikram gets to know that some boys from the college are troubling Chitra and making fun of her. He immediately approaches the boys and fights against them in style, surprising everyone, especially Chitra. His moves make her fall in love with him in an instant, and she decides to confess it. The next day, Chitra and Vikram can be seen talking with each other. Right when Chitra is about to confess her feelings for him, Vikram gets an urgent call from his sister. He receives the call and walks away, telling Chitra that he will be back after some time. Back to the present, Chitra mentions that Vikram never came back and that she is meeting him after six years. Later, she again meets Vikram and Kitu and informs them how the advertisement for her company should be shot. Some days after the advertisement is shot, Chitra visits Vikram's office and informs him that all of their investors liked the advertisement. She also congratulates everyone and reveals that they have been called to New York by one of their sponsors to shoot the rest of the campaign. In the next scene, Chitra, Vikram, and Kitu reach New York for the shoot and are picked up by the producer. The shoot goes as expected, and in the evening, Vikram and Chitra spend some time together at a happening place beside a sea. Vikram finally apologizes to Chitra for not coming back in the last six years. At first, Chitra gets mad at him, but when Vikram explains that he was away because of his father's sudden death and his sister's marriage, she somewhat calms down. Later, Vikram also tells Chitra that he returned to the college to meet her, but could not find her. He tried to reach her, but had no contact number or address to start with. At last, he mentions that he loved her, and he still does. Even the name of his company, Artic, is an anagram of her name. Listening to this, Chitra realizes how much Vikram loves her and holds him in a tight hug. In the next scene, the team is on its way back to India. Vikram gets a call from his nephew, Mahalaksmi. He apologizes to her for being late and promises not to let her mother put her in the girl's hostel. Following this, the next day, Vikram returns home and is surprised to see it in shambles. When he asks people what happened, Tenali approaches him and reveals that there was a gas cylinder blast and his brother-in-law and Mahalaksmi died because of the explosion. He also mentions that Vikram's sister is critically ill and is in the emergency ward of the hospital. Vikram is devastated by the news, but he calms himself down and goes to the hospital to meet his sister. 
At the hospital, the doctor tells Vikram that he needs to take good care of his sister to restore her memory as she is severely injured in the head. Later, Vikram is asked to sign the post-mortem report of his brother-in-law and Mahalaxmi. Because of the sudden deaths, Vikram is greatly disturbed. He stops smiling and rarely talks to people. He continually reminisces about all the good times he shared with his beloved niece and drowns deeper in misery. One day, while Vikram is mourning in his office, Chitra approaches him and suggests they go out to have dinner together. Later, at the restaurant, Chitra tries her best to calm Vikram, but fails. Shortly after, when the duo is coming out of the restaurant, Vikram notices different clocks hung on the wall behind the reception. After looking carefully at the time difference between New Delhi and New York, Vikram realizes that Mahalaxmi is still alive, as he spoke with her before leaving New York at around 4 p.m., and her post-mortem report stated that she died at 3.15 p.m. He then urges Chitra to go to the hospital and double-check the report, while he visits the police station and has a few words with the officers. On his way to the police station, someone throws a rope of nails in front of Vikram's car, causing all of his car's tires to go flat. Following this, Vikram gets a call from a private number, where the antagonist of the movie, Arun, speaks with him, and here, it is revealed that Mahalaxmi has been kidnapped. Arun mentions that it is he who planted a bomb in Sridevi's house and killed his brother-in-law and severely injured Sridevi. In the meantime, someone from behind tries to stab Vikram, but his left hand stops the attack and kills the attacker on the spot. In the next scene, Vikram approaches the police station and tries to ask the second officer about the post-mortem report. Unfortunately, the officer refuses to provide them with an answer and sends them away. Soon, Vikram visits the doctor who signed the post-mortem report and discovers that someone threatened the doctor to sign it. The next day, Vikram, Chitra, and Kitu again go to the police station and ask the officer to provide them with the actual information about the case. This time, the senior officer calls them to his room and makes fun of them. Seeing this, Vikram's left hand attacks the officer and smashes his head continuously on the table. Kitu and Chitra hardly manage to pull him away and bring him out of the police station. After this, Vikram visits Dr. Rajan and requests that he take out the extra neurons from his left hand. Dr. Rajan then tells him how much his mother wanted a part of her second son in Vikram's hand and named it Betal. As soon as he gets to know that it was his mother's wish to keep both of her sons alive, he decides against the plan. Meanwhile, Kitu is continuously trying to find out his kidnapper's address. Using his number, he successfully tracks it and is surprised to find that the number Arun is using is actually Vikram's number. Vikram then realizes that Arun is using the technology of SIM card cloning and is calling him using his own number. What a twist. In the following scene, while Vikram is talking to an unconscious Sridevi, he again gets a call from Arun, who sends him his location and challenges him to come and meet him. Having no other choice, Vikram arrives at the given location and meets a shop vendor. The shop vendor then provides him with a bag, and Arun, on the call, suggests that he bring the bag to the station. Somehow, Vikram manages to reach the station, but a thief snatches his bag and runs away. Vikram races after him and catches him, but Arun tells him that the thief is part of the plan and that he should let him go. After that, Arun then gives Vikram 15 minutes to reach him. Exhausted, Vikram drinks a bottle of water from a stranger and runs towards the location. Unfortunately, Arun reveals that the water Vikram drank contained drugs that will make him sleep in a few minutes. Afraid about not being able to reach the destination on time, Vikram inserts his hand on a nearby electric board and gets himself electrocuted. Because of this, he gains his consciousness back momentarily and continues running towards the given location. Shortly after, Arun can be seen waiting for Vikram with his helper, Nanda Kishore. Vikram, greatly affected by the toxic water, is facing problems walking. Eventually, he falls to the road before he can confront Arun. The next day, Vikram gains consciousness and is talking to his friends in his office. He tries to map out the places and find a clue about why Arun called him there. Then, he suddenly remembers the car that he spotted the night before and finds it parked under a bridge with the number 21 written on its back glass. After he finds the number, someone hits him on the head and brings him to a landfill site. Here, a large number of Arun's henchmen try to kill him, but Vikram fights against them bravely with the help of his left hand and defeats all of them. Back at his office, Vikram's left hand, now his best friend Aditya, picks up a toy bus while his group is trying to figure out the clue from the map. 
When Aditya throws the toy bus up in the air, Vikram realizes that there is some connection between the kidnapping and the bus accident that only he survived. He also remembers that he heard the passengers talking about someone named Arun seconds before the accident. After getting this clue, Vikram suggests that his friends find out more details about the accident. Despite getting all the information about the dead passengers, Vikram still finds it difficult to connect the cases. After some deliberation, he remembers Arun reciting a line typically reserved for wedding ceremonies. Here, it is revealed that Arun was supposed to be Sridevi's husband and marry her years ago. But because Sridevi loved someone else, Vikram helped her run away from the wedding, making Arun a laughingstock for everyone. He has still not forgotten the humiliation, which is why he is taking revenge. Later, Vikram visits Arun's father and asks him if he knows about Arun's current location. Arun's father denies knowing anything. However, he reveals that the last time he met his son, Arun was planning to kill the 21 people who made his life miserable. Right then, Vikram gets a call from Arun, and he reveals that he is the one who planted the bomb inside Sri Devi's house. He also mentions that he will keep Mahalaksmi like his own daughter, and informs Vikram that he has kidnapped Sri Devi as well. In the following scene, Arun can be seen talking to Sri Devi. As they chat, she reveals that two of her brothers are living inside a single body. She also assures Arun that her brothers will soon come and save her. On the other hand, Vikram remembers Mahalaksmi and the things she likes. As Arun mentioned that he will give Mahalaksmi everything he wishes for, Vikram visits her favorite ice cream center and spots Arun's right-hand man buying a bulk of Mahalaksmi's favorite ice cream. He then follows the man and reaches the warehouse where Arun has been keeping her hostage. Before Vikram can reach Arun, Arun's henchmen attack him but cannot do any harm. Despite being outnumbered, Arun fights the henchmen and knocks each of them down. After all the henchmen are taken down, Vikram approaches Arun and lands a few harsh blows on him. In the meantime, Mahalaksmi appears and calls Vikram. When distracted by her, Vikram gets badly beaten by Arun. When Vikram is on the floor, about to give up, his left hand, Aditya, helps him get up and fight. Vikram also manages to save Mahalaksmi from falling into the trap and hugs her tightly. Arun tries to throw a sharp metal chain toward Vikram, but Aditya catches it and throws it back to Arun, hitting him in the chest and killing him instantly. In the last scene, Vikram returns Mahalaksmi to Sri Devi and watches them reunite. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.